Um, home care support it plays a very important role, we know, in supporting older people as well as disabled people to live as independently as possible. And while not all disabled people need or want home care support, many do require the service. Um, including many children as well as, as older people. But there's been a growing crisis in home care support over the past number of years. And I mean, the demand for home care has grown considerably. Uh, we see an increase year on year for the number of people being approved for hours and then the number of people being allocated. And I suppose that's down to our growing population. Um, as with the disability capacity review, which showed that the growth and ageing of the disability population is likely to, to drive increased demand for home care services even much further. Um, but it's, it's the failure, I suppose, in home care provision is compounding further pressure on our hospitals as well, because the lack of alternatives in regard to community care has left thousands of people in hospital longer than they should be, and many can't return home because there isn't a carer in place to provide the care that they need once they return home from hospital. Um, and I suppose the issues confronting home care services, they come down to a failure of planning by government because I mean, home support workers are not going to simply appear out of, air, out of thin air. We need a proactive strategic approach to workforce planning across health and social care services. We need to see a pay agreement for the sector. Um, we need to see public investment in the future with regard to home care. We need a proper career pathway for carers with advanced skill sets and a greater role for maybe nurses and other health and social care professionals in delivering care in the home. And what I'm seeing as well is that many carers, um, the HC, yeah, they're relying or an over-reliance maybe on private companies or agencies to provide care. And while they're paying them a substantial amount of money, the money is not being passed on to the carer. Um, so it's very difficult to get carers to work for that amount of money. And when they do, they go into uh, one house to provide care to a client. They're constantly wa clock watching because they need to be at the next house. And this is putting immense pressure on them. It's also unfair on the person who is receiving the care because they're not getting the care that they actually um, it, it decide and require. Um, I know several examples. I've, I've come across a 101-year-old man there who's been allocated hours, but can't get anyone to, to fill the, the, the middle part of the day that he requires. His own children are in their 70s. They're not able to provide the care that he requires anymore, but he's living in his own home, relatively healthy, just requires a little bit of extra support. I've come across two families who have children with autism who've been granted home care support, can't get anyone to work for the money that's been offered. The HSC have then said, well, you can have a home care support, but you must act as the employer. So you must register as, as the employer. You must pay the PRSI, the PAYE. You must change your home insurance as well. It, it, this, it, I don't know whether this is just peculiar to CHO1. I'm not sure, but I've come across this on many occasions. And the pressure and the strain of that on either a parent or a spouse uh, is, is too much and they don't want to take on that. It's a lot of responsibility and it's just not something to So while they, they appreciate the money that's been granted to them to provide the support, it's not something that it actually can, can, can do. Thank you, Kevin Cowell.